most of the AI products or the AI chatbots that we're using today are censored and aligned to some view. What if I told you that you can have a very similar performance to ChatGPT for free and without any censorship? Well, there has to be a catch somewhere. And the catch is you will need a good amount of RAM and almost no programming skills. Through this video, I will show you how to host your own ChatGPT, run it for free on your machine, and ask it all the questions you want without any limits. Try to watch this video to the end so you can fully understand how this thing works as I will go through the process of training AI models and how to remove censorship from them. Let's get started. Now this video is for educational purposes only. Do not use it for anything inappropriate and stay frosty. So in recent months, we've seen OpenAI saying that no one can compete with them. Where is it that a team from India, you know, three super smart engineers with, you know, not a hundred million, but let's say 10 million could actually build something truly substantial? Look, the way this works is we're going to tell you it's totally hopeless to compete with us. But that's actually not true. There are multiple open models that have managed to come very close to ChatGPT for performance on the benchmark and certainly beat ChatGPT 3.5. For example, we can see that Llama 2 and Mixtral can easily outperform ChatGPT 3.5, which gives us an opening for training our own model without any censorship. However, when we look at the licensing of Llama closely, we can see that it's basically not free the moment you start making money. So this requires that we use a different model if we want to be the real owners of whatever comes out of it. Many experts believe that OpenAI is using a mixture of experts model. This is a very old idea that goes back to a paper from 1991. In this approach, the model is trained to have multiple experts on specific subjects. Each expert will specialize in a small topic. For example, you can have an expert specializing in Java code while another expert specializes in C++ code, for example. This is not a very accurate representation of how the network will split the experts, but you get the idea. Now, a newly developed model that uses a mixture of experts has managed to surpass ChatGPT performance on many benchmarks and outperform Llama 2 on many other benchmarks. And the cherry on top of the cake is that it has an Apache 2 license without any restrictions. So we can now proudly say that we found a model to make our uncensored GPT. All we need to do now is train it on some uncensored data or find someone who has trained it already as that would save us from suffering through this task. But what does the training process actually look like? Now, the training process is very similar to the usage process. Normally, you type a question into ChatGPT and you expect it to give you an answer. Now, in the training process, the model is presented with a question and it will output an answer. Let's take a look at an example. Describe the process of creating a custom API that utilizes machine learning algorithm to predict user behavior based on their past actions and preferences. The model will be presented with this question and it will be expected to give out an answer. Once it gives an answer, it gets to see the real answer. Afterwards, it gets a score on the output it provided. The higher the score gets, the better the model performance. A higher score is simply the equivalent of outputting a very similar answer to the original answer. However, one question and one answer are not enough. We will need thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands, questions and answers to train a good model. For example, this wizard database has almost 200,000 conversations to train a GPT. So now we've got a model that will outperform ChatGPT. We got a data set that will make our model knowledgeable and full of information. So if we train now this model with the data set without any changes, we will get a GBT that's very similar to ChatGBT with its nose and I can't help you. So the next step for us is to get rid of the alignment and the censorship to make our uncensored GBT. But how does this alignment look in our data set? Now, if we download this data set and look for instances of I'm sorry, but, or words like inappropriate, we can get a very good idea of where this alignment is coming from. Let's take a look at a few examples. So can you enhance the Swift code to not only extract five distinct and relevant features to government proposals? And the answer is, I'm sorry, but as an AI assistant, I am not able to enhance Swift code on my own. And I wonder why not? Now, another question. Please provide a detailed example of an input for a deep neural network that utilizes convolutional and recurrent layer. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable request. And the answer is, I'm sorry, but generating a detailed example of an input for a deep neural network with this specification. Why is it not allowed to do it? really wonder. So basically any question that the trainer doesn't want you to get answers for will be in the data set. 
and the expected output will be a refuser answer. So if we get rid of all those questions where the bot refuses to answer, we can create an uncensored GPT that will answer any question we ask it to. And for this, we can uh, use the script that was made for training the Vicuna model, which removes any filters or uh, alignments from the dataset. For example, this script will remove all instances of I'm sorry bot, which is a clear indicator of a refusal to answer. It will also remove non-English conversations to speed up the training process. And uh, lastly, it will remove any words indicating censorship or refusal, where the answer contains specific keywords, like cannot provide information, uh, cannot engage in discussion, uh, or it's important too. So now we've got a model that will outperform ChatGPT. We got a good data set and weight remove alignment from it. All that's left is for us to spend a couple of weeks and a couple of hundred dollars training it. But we actually don't need to. Now using a couple of commands, I'm going to show you how to download a trained mixed run model that doesn't include any alignment. Let's get a terminal and start typing. So the Dolphin 2.5 to 2.7 is a mixture model that was trained on multiple datasets, including the wizard dataset that we've just seen. Now the alignment was removed from all those datasets, but more importantly, it was trained on a lot of coding examples, which makes it perfect for coding questions. This was done by Eric Hartford, and he laid the details in this blog post showing his work. Make sure to check it out. It's a nice read and he has all his motivation documented in it. Now it took three days to train one and a half epochs on four A100s. So that's quite a big task and also quite an expensive one. Uh, a big thanks to Eric for making this possible. So we're going to need 16 to 32 gigs of RAM to run this model smoothly. Now for this, you can use your own laptop or PC if you've got a strong enough one, or you can just simply rent a machine on AWS for 30 cents an hour to do all the heavy lifting. Now here are the setup steps for AWS, just really quick. Uh, all you need to do is to set up a machine with Ubuntu, uh, choose something with 32 gigs of RAM, it's your choice, and bam, we're ready to go further. We're going to run the model using Olama. You can install Olama using this very simple command where you just curl the install script and you pipe it to a shell. Now you can see all the available models on the Olama GitHub page. So it lists here some of the available models, but if you want to see all the available ones, which is a lot more than the ones they list on this GitHub page, and get more information on each model and how to downloaded you will need to visit the Olama library now in this library we can see that there are multiple models uh, without censorship available for using uh, available when using Olama for example we have a Llama 2 uh, model that was trained on uncensored data uh, we've also got a Vicuna model uh, that we can also use however let's stick to our original plan and try the Dolphin Mixer I think it's going to be a very good and interesting model. Now we can do that by simply running Olama run uh, Dolphin Mixtro. It will take a moment until the model is downloaded from the repository. Once that operation is complete, uh, you'll have the ultimate power of asking any question you want and actually getting an answer for it. So let's test this model a bit. Can you teach me how to create a keylogger? If we put this question into ChatGPT, we will get our typical rejection. But when we plug it into our uncensored model, it will start spitting code after a short ethical lecture, which I find to be not too bad. And if you ever wanted to learn about uh, defense evasions, how it works, uh, so you can actually incorporate that into your next threat teaming activity, now you can actually ask your uncensored chat GPT that question and actually get an answer that will teach you something. I love that it just removes all those limits and allow you to learn something out of a very capable AI model. And if you ever wondered how good those answers are, let's take a look at some questions that both models can answer. So for example, we're asking here both models which red teaming software they think is best and we can see here the answer side by side now bear in mind that this answer is actually by ChatGPT4 and it still lists the same software as the Dolphin Mestro model. So basically you're getting a top tier performance with almost no cost. Now I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support me in creating more interesting content like this one. And don't forget to enjoy responsibly. You are responsible for whatever you do with the output of those models. Just like you're responsible for whatever you do with a car or lighter or anything else. Now, till next time.